What's up guys and welcome to this action RPG tutorial. Today we're going to talk about containers or world or loot containers. In order to make a loot container, all we have to do here is go to inventory system, then MP container, and you want to create a child out of MP world container. So if we go ahead and right click here, create a child, I can name it, for example, VP new loot container. And then let's go ahead and open the loot container. And of course, feel free to change the uh, visual of the, uh, of the actor. Uh, but more importantly here, we have the settings. First of all, we're going to change the container name to maybe new container. We can indicate the container items that we can find inside this container. Let's actually go ahead and clear them for now. And we can indicate number of columns and rows. But let's go ahead and first place the uh, loot container here. And then go ahead and play and check, and check out the content of this container. So if we uh, click on the container, as you can see, it says 5 by 5. That's a name right there. So it adds a, a container window to your uh, screen. And for now, it's empty. Uh, of course, we can change the uh, number of columns and rows. For example, maybe like something bigger, maybe eight by eight. And if we um, interact with the, uh, of course, loot container, it's gonna show a bigger container. In order to add items to this container, all we have to do here is go to container items and add a bunch of items. And these items are, of course, from the pickup data tables. For example, the weapons data table, we can, for example, add this Omega sword. So we can go ahead and add that right there. And let's say that count, of course, is one because it's a weapon. Uh, you can indicate whether it's rotated or not. And very important, you want to indicate where this uh, item exists. So in our case, it exists inside the weapons data table. We can add another item such as armor. And this, of course, I know this one exists inside the armor's data table. There you go. And maybe we can add like something like a red potion. So red potion right there. Maybe the count 10. This one exists inside other. So let's actually go ahead and verify that. So red potion right there. Let's go ahead and give it a try and see what we can find inside this container. So if I click on inside the container here, as you can see, we have our Omega sword right there. And it also generates random stats for the weapons or for the items in general. So if you haven't watched our pickup tutorial, go ahead and watch that to understand more about stats and random stats. So it does uh, generate random stats. So if, if I go ahead and loot the container once again, I will see uh, different stats for these items. Some other settings that we can play around with are, for example, required duration for interaction. This is how long you need to hold the interaction key in order to interact with the object. This also works for other things in the world, and we'll see that in the next videos. But for now, if, we, if you set this, for example, to two seconds, then it's going to take us two seconds to interact with the object. And we can see a progress bar over the uh, container item there. So if I go ahead and interact with this container, it's going to take me two seconds. So I have to hold the left mouse button key here for two seconds. And we're going to see a progress bar there. As you can see, there you go. And then after two seconds, it's going to show the container. So once again, I have to hold the left mouse button for two seconds. And in third person mode, you would have to hold the uh, E key or F key based on what you're, uh, what you're uh, your settings of course um other things here are we can change the outline color so what you want to do here is you want to do add new override function and we have a git outline color uh, somewhere here so git outline color and you can change this for example to maybe something like green and now if you hover your cursor over the object as you can see now it shows green uh, we also have the uh, git distance so this is the acceptable distance we can for example, if we set this to be a thousand, uh, in this case, what you're gonna notice here is that actually I can interact with the container from this distance right here. And as you can see, there we go. So you can actually control the uh, the distance, uh, the interaction distance, based on maybe the size of the actor, etc. So I think that's pretty much it here. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to watch the other videos to learn more about the system. Until then, thank you for watching. Stay safe. See you later. Goodbye.